Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Outside the Box. I'm your host, One the CEO, and today we're talking about history in the making, culture, art, and legacy. So you are now plugged in, tuned in, tapped in to Outside the Box. In light of Black History Month, I have someone in the studio that is definitely making history. Not only is he honoring it, he's creating it. So I know you guys are wondering, who is he? He is Reginald C. Adams. Let's take a look. I remember my first inspirations with art was when I was a really young child and um, watching cartoons and seeing if I could recreate the imagery that I was seeing. I remember drawing as long as I could hold a pencil up. Those were some of my earliest memories were like comics and cartoons and, and comic book characters. I'm Reginald Adams, a public artist here in Houston, Texas, and most of my work is in the public domain. The idea starts usually in a vision or a dream. I have, um, I wake up, you know, in the middle of the night because it's one period of the day where the phone doesn't ring, there's no you know, social media notifications, there's no emails. Uh, I've learned to kind of capture or capitalize on this really unique period of time at night when I wake up and I'm fully awake and fully alert. And I usually have ideas of either a project that I've been thinking about or working on or maybe something just comes in my mind. I had this dream as a kid that I was riding this giant caterpillar. It was just a crazy dream as a child, right? You don't even think anything of it. But 30 years later, uh, one of my clients uh, asked for a place sculpture for a new park they were developing. And that dream came to, to mind like if it was yesterday. And I proposed, like, why don't we have this giant caterpillar that kids can actually climb on? And they're like, oh, we love it. Oftentimes people ask me, like, Reginald, what's your favorite medium? And now it's people. Um, because the scale and the scope of the projects that I work on are so large or larger than what I could do on my own. So before I can even get into like what material or what kind of paint or what colors, it's usually what people do I need to have around to execute this idea that's bigger than what I can do on my own. Houston's a pretty amazing city. You know, there's a countless number of new canvases. Every blank wall is a new canvas. And that's every business, every school, every community center, every hospital, every church is a potential canvas. And for somebody like me, I could spend the rest of my life trying to fill those canvases up. My legacy on earth will be that this guy left, you know, I have hundreds of projects all over the world. And that's me leaving the earth better than I found it. Now, I know you guys are dying to hear from the Reginald C. Adams. So without further ado, I want you guys to give it up for Reginald C. Adams. Thank you. Glad to be here, man. Thank you for coming. I am, I am honored to have you and just to be able to share this moment with you and engage in a conversation with you and pick your brain. I am honored. So I know who you are because you are definitely a mentor of mine and you teach so many people and you shed your light around so many. I want you to share with those that are watching and listening a little bit more about what it is that you do. Well, I am Reginald Adams and I was the little boy who loved to draw, who ne never grew up. And mm -hmm. thanks to some very supportive parents and a supportive family and a network of mm -hmm. people who believed in my creativity and my artwork, I've been able to live uh, my dream to be an artist. And so for the past 25 years here in Houston, uh, my journey has really just been that, um, bringing um, art to communities, to young people across the city, around the world. And uh, that's really the driving force right now is uh, touching young folks with, with creativity. Now I want to ask you, what was your aha moment? Like where were you in life when you discovered that you wanted to be able to pay it forward? Mm, that's a great question. My first um, kind of 
realization that youth were going to be a target uh, of my creative work was teaching at Shape Community Center when I first got to Houston. And I taught an art class. It was a, a basic drawing class. And it was really the feedback that I received from the parents mm -hmm. who shared with me that their child uh, was so excited to bring their sketchbook home and, and share examples of what they had drawn in Mr. Adams' class. And it was really just me sharing what I had learned. I had no formal training, but we drew every day and we'd go out and draw in the park and we'd draw each other and draw ourselves. And so when I saw that type of uh, response from the students to the parent, to the parent back to me, I realized that I was making a difference and that right. meant something to me. I just kept pushing that. Now that is awesome. Now I will be honest, my first time recognizing you as an artist, I believe maybe a little over a year ago, a labyrinth came across mm. my page. You guys do labyrinths on the beach. And yes. when I saw that, I wanted to just be a part of that. And so I just kind of started following your journey only to discover that not only did you do labyrinths on the beach, but you also do historical monumental work in the community. And I came across one of the Jack Yates memorials, and I was like, oh, my God, can you give us a little bit of insight about that? Sure. I mean, here we are on the second day of uh, February, Black History Month, celebrating uh, black culture, black history, not just for the month, but really, you know, for all the contributions that uh, African Americans and people of color have made. And so... 170 years ago, Jack Yates and three other um, freedmen pooled $1,000 to buy 10 acres of land, which is now Emancipation Park. So little do people know, Emancipation Park is the oldest municipal park in the state of Texas. It was founded by these four men. It was founded so that their families would have a safe place to convene and celebrate their freedom. And so uh, two years ago, um, the Emancipation um, Park Conservancy and the OST Almeida uh, Corridor Redevelopment Authority commissioned um, my team to create four monuments um, that would honor those four men, including Reverend Jack Yates, Reverend uh, Elias Dibble, <coughs> excuse me, Rev, uh, Mr. Richard Brock and Richard Allen. So if you were to go to Emancipation Park located at 3801 Emancipation Avenue on each corner of the four intersections of that park, you'll see these four mosaic monuments honoring, honoring these historical figures. Oh man, so how does it feel to know that you're a part of that legacy? It's beautiful, it's, a, it's an honor. I mean, I live half a mile from Emancipation Park. So I have a three-year-old son, Zenith, and I take him to the park regularly. Mm -hmm. And it is a joy because I'll sometimes meet strangers or new friends or neighbors around the park, and I'll tell them about where I live and what I do, and I'll share with them, oh, we're right there through the trees is one of our works of art. And to be able to do that in your own neighborhood, in your own community, for something that will be around for generations to come that's also about generational legacy it's a it's an honor to be able to do that now once you saw the impact that your artwork had on the community how did that change the course of your decisions um it made me want to become a better me okay. because i realized that there were you know uh, young people watching my moves and watching what i was saying and watching what i was doing and i want to be an example to young people of the possibilities of what can happen when you pursue your passion. And for me, it was art, and I've been able to live it, and I want other young people to know that they can too. Right. Now, we are talking about historical monuments in Houston, but you're also uh, very active abroad. So how do you feel about that, having your, you know, how is that for you? Um, I love to travel. Um, we traveled a lot growing up, and, you know, I think – it's like a bug you get. Once you start seeing other new places, mm -hmm. you only want to see other new places. Mm -hmm. And um, I started traveling internationally around the late 1990s, went to Africa for the first time, and that changed my life. And I realized that I don't want to leave a footprint or a legacy only in Houston. I want to leave a footprint or a legacy around the world. And so I really try to uh, pursue opportunities to do that. And it has taken me to over 40 countries. Uh, around the world doing all kinds of projects, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. 
Oh, that is awesome. You actually, um, you guys just finished a project in Dallas, Absolute Equality? Uh, we, it's a Restorative Justice. Restorative, I'm it's sorry. It's a mosaic yeah. uh, mural for the South Dallas County Government Building commissioned by County Commissioner Wiley Price. Uh, and it is a work of art that really celebrates uh, the balance of justice and also the challenges of justice. And uh, we're really excited to have a work of art in Dallas. Now, now. how large is that piece? Because I know the camera the, doesn't do it any the, justice. The mural is 22 feet high and and almost eight feet wide. Oh, wow. And so it's, you know, you walk into this foyer and you see this really beautiful, stunning work of art that kind of captivates you. And it's also meaningful. So it's not just a pretty picture, which is important for us. Right. Now, what advice could you give a young, thriving artist that wants to make an impact on the community? What would I tell them? Yeah. Um, keep creating and go to business school. <laughs> Seriously. Because what I found, One, is m there's so much talent. I mm -hmm. think we're naturally gifted with certain talents, right? Not everybody can draw. We all have our own unique abilities. But what I found working with so many artists over my career is most – most of the t most talented artists are not the best business people and right. it makes it hard for them to really pursue their love for their artwork if they have to struggle making a living doing other things and so I really try to emphasize the importance of good business skills if you love art and you are passionate you're going to do it you're going to mm -hmm. find ways of create and craft new but business, you don't always get like that. And right. so I think when you can combine some good business practice with a passion, you're more likely to be able to succeed artistically. Now, that is some good advice. <laughs> that is some definitely good advice. Now, have you had um, – how how is it getting the community to receive you? How are you received in Houston as well as cities abroad when your artwork goes up? Uh, we're well received. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I grew up, we moved around quite a bit, uh, me and my brother, uh, Richard, two, he's two years older than I, and we were always the new kids on the block. Mm -hmm. So it was important as a coping mechanism to make friends, right? right? And I learned how to make friends really quickly, and art was a way to do so, because mm -hmm. I drew really well, and I was always drawing, and, and so um, I could make friends through creating for people and drawing pictures of them or drawing toys. And so that love for people has now kind of permeated the essence of my work, where uh, it's the medium of choice for me, and it's connecting with people to create works of art much bigger than whatever I could do on my own. Okay. Now, you guys, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your Juneteenth? Yes, project. very excited. Because um, I'm a part of that, and I, I advise anyone that is hearing about this, whether it's on the show, whether it's on any of my social media platforms, to definitely join the movement. But I don't want to speak too soon. I want to give yeah, you the Well, the floor. first thing I'll do is I'll send people to the website, JuneteenthLegacyProject.com. It is where you'll find all the information you need around a new mural that we're soon to paint in Galveston, the, the birthplace of Juneteenth, celebrating that momentous occasion in uh, June 19th, 1865, where General Granger and thousands of black soldiers um, uh, convened onto the island, essentially to enforce martial law, which um, allowed for the uh, release of over 250,000 blacks in Texas. Uh, to receive their freedom. And so we're painting a mural celebrating that uh, momentous occasion. And thanks to my collaborative partner, Sam Collins, and the NIA Cultural Arts Center, um, by June of this year, we'll be standing in front of a new work of art, really celebrating you know, the, the freedom of black people in America. That is awesome. Now, can you tell me a little bit more how you plan to get the community involved into that project? Yes, we have, uh, you know, um, COVID, it's, a, it's a large scale it project. It is. There's a lot of uh, tentacles and arms and layers to the project beyond just painting the mural on the wall, which I'm excited about. But we have an art and literacy contest where we will be uh, launching. Uh, in fact, uh, next Friday, we'll make a formal announcement about this opportunity for uh, middle school students up to collegiate undergrad to submit uh, two dimensional original works of art and uh, poems or spoken word. Uh, 
speaking to absolute equality and what that means to them. That's a way of us getting the message out mm -hmm. um, and getting people involved without them having to be on the wall. We have a documentary film by a local filmmaker, Neiman Catley, that will be following the production of the mural as well and as... how large is this mural? This is um, 126 feet long and 38 feet in height, which is roughly 5,000 square feet. So that is basically what people... Image, imagery would yeah, look I mean, like in comparison. That's, um, not quite. I mean, that's a rendering. So okay. the mural will look exactly like that. Mm -hmm. That is the actual building. But the, the audience in front is a bit of an exaggeration. Okay. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want to crowd people like that right now with COVID. That right, wouldn't be right. uh, COVID uh, friendly. But but uh, we will transform the parking lot into a green space for the dedication on June 21st, uh, 2021, this year. Awesome. I definitely want to be there for that. I look forward. To it. I want okay. to be there. Okay. All right. Now, do you guys have a website or anything where people can log on to? Yes. Are you raising funds or? Yes. Um, if you visit the Juneteenth Legacy Project .com, that site will take you to the GoFundMe, the GoFundMe page. page. It'll take you to my website, which is ReginaldAdams.com, and it'll give you a lot of background information, historically historically accurate information about Juneteenth, if you want to know or if you want to get involved uh, as a volunteer, as a contributor, or uh, if you have a media contact that you'd like to know more. Now, see your goal there is 400000 You yes. guys are halfway there. That's right. So we're definitely making progress to seeing this manifest. That's sure. right, and it's been great support. I mean, we just launched it a month ago, and we have – um, our goal almost 50% there so we're excited that we'll reach our goal by June and every penny counts so if you're out there and you want to be a part of this momentous historical occasion this is just one way you can give and any amount is going to help us make our goal come true. Okay now do you have any other projects that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah we're actually right now in the works with uh, Foot Locker. Foot Locker is building their first community store in Houston uh, meaning it's the first store outside of a mall and we have uh, five murals that we're producing for the store, four of which will be indoors and uh, a very large one outside, 122 feet long, eight feet high. And we are literally working on that as we speak. In fact, if you saw my fingernails, you'd be seeing some paint <laughs> here from uh, having worked today. Well, there's nothing like being a hard working artist. Yes. But when you work. love what you do, it doesn't feel like work at I'd all, love does it. it. I, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't do anything other than what I've been doing blessed and gifted to do i'm very thankful for the opportunity yeah well i want to say thank you um just from the community and from myself to you for allowing your gift to make room for you and for being a, a light space in a dark room you know because i know there's other thriving artists as with myself that look up to you and i thank you personally for all the knowledge that you've given me on my journey of being an artist because for those that are watching he is definitely my mentor <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mention that in the beginning and of you this are show. a wonderful artist and i think you know one for you to create these platforms for people like myself to be able to yeah. share the story it's really about who we can reach and who we can inspire so yes. keep doing what you're doing i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing and yeah. we can get it all done together Amen. So if those that are watching, if they want to stay in contact with you, you have a website. I do. I send folks to my website. That way you can see all the things that we've spoken about and more on this show. That's ReginaldAdams.com. It has access to all my socials, my bio, my CV, press kit, uh, you name it, the media we've garnered. And I'm really thankful to be able to share with your audience uh, what we do with the arts in Houston communities. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just excited to be a part of the whole movement. Now, you also have an Instagram page, a personal Instagram, but you still post art and other things there as well. And there's a Facebook page for those that are not really social media friendly. You guys can still follow him on Reginald C. Adams' Facebook page. You can like and follow there. And for those that are watching and listening, I want to remind you guys that you can catch us on multiple platforms. You can catch us on YouTube, Google Play, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Hip Hop Streets, live stream, music app, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, and Pocket Cast. And you can also find us on Facebook. I want to thank you again, Reginald, for joining it's been us. It's my pleasure. And for thank coming you, outside Annette. the box and letting me get all in your business. <laughs> keep on building a legacy. And keep doing and what you're doing. And for those that are watching, you are now outside the box.